When the spider is used for wrist procedures, it is usually attached onto the non-operative side of the OR table at about the patient's chest level in a vertical orientation. A hand table can be used but is not required. The components required to perform the procedure are the traction accessory, piggyback, wrist plate, wrist arthroscopy accessory and the wrist counter traction bar. There is also a finger trap sizing ring to assist in choosing the correct size of wrist stabilization kit. The wrist stabilization kits come in three sizes and each kit contains a tenet spider drape, wrist strap and two finger traps of two different sizes. The large wrist stabilization kit has two white and two green finger traps. The medium wrist stabilization kit has two green and two yellow finger traps. The small wrist stabilization kit has two yellow and two blue finger traps. The spider is usually attached to the OR table on the non-operative side, beside the patient's chest in a vertical orientation. After the patient is intubated, but prior to prepping the limb, the appropriate wrist stabilization kit is chosen. The non-sterile finger trap sizing ring is used to determine the size of finger traps needed. The surgeon must check the size of both fingers that he will be using and choose the wrist stabilization kit that has the appropriate finger traps. The finger traps are designed to fit over the second knuckle. The appropriate finger trap must fit over that knuckle and not slip when firmly pulled. While the patient is being prepped and draped, the sterile components are assembled on the sterile back table. A piggyback, a traction accessory, the wrist arthroscopy accessory and hand plate and a sterile kit are provided. The sterile kit is opened and the components are placed on the table. The components are assembled here. The wrist plate is slid onto the wrist arthroscopy accessory. The lower part must insert into the bottom hole. The wrist arthroscopy accessory is then inserted into the traction accessory. The wrist strap is then threaded onto the wrist plate. It is attached to the wrist plate so that the Velcro side is facing up. Next, the bicep counter traction post is positioned over the patient's bicep. The post fits into a Clark clamp and the pad goes over the patient's bicep or over the tourniquet if used. Ensure that the tourniquet air outlets are turned to the side and not directly under the pad. The usual procedure to prepare the spider to ensure sterility is to have a sterile person insert the sterile piggyback into the distal end of the spider. The sterile person then will open the base of the drape and drop it over the top of the piggyback ensuring that the top face of the piggyback is completely uncovered. They can then pull the drape all the way down to the spider amplifier, being careful to ensure that the outer drape remains sterile. Then, the spider is grasped by the slender arm and moved so the terminal end is over the patient's elbow and as high as possible. The traction and wrist arthroscopy accessory are inserted into the female quick connect. Pull out on the traction accessory to ensure that it is connected properly. Each of the quick connect locks are then engaged behind the release buttons. This video shows the sliding locks on the spider and piggyback, as well as the rotational lock on the traction accessory being locked in place. The finger traps from the kit are placed over the patient's appropriate fingers. In this case, a large green and a medium yellow finger trap are used. Pull on the finger traps to ensure proper fit and no slippage. Ensure the black cones face the palm side of the hand. The hand is then raised and the finger traps are inserted into the cone-shaped receptors on the wrist arthroscopy accessory. The traps can be inserted into either the outside or the inside receptors. After attaching the finger traps, the spider is positioned for surgery. The spider slender arm and blue traction collar are grasped and the spider is pulled up to position and pretension the arm. The axis of the traction accessory should be in line with the longitudinal axis of the forearm. The bottom of the wrist plate should have slight pressure on the hand. 
The wrist strap is then wrapped around the hand to secure the hand relative to the plate. The traction collar on the traction accessory is rotated to adjust traction during the case. The arrows indicate the direction to turn the collar to increase or decrease traction. There is a scale in both metric and imperial force for reading the amount of traction. Rotating clockwise increases the traction, while counterclockwise rotation decreases traction. Pronation and supination can be adjusted by releasing the rotation cam and turning the patient's wrist to the desired position. The position can again be locked in place by locking the cam. Intraoperative adjustments are very simple and the wrist can be held in a rigid position. The arm can be held in a full range of pronation and supination without ever changing the amount of traction on the limb. Tenet recommends the use of two finger traps for any wrist procedures. The thumb and index finger should be used if the operative procedure is on the thumb or if ulnar deviation is required. Alternatively, the index and middle fingers could be used depending on surgeon's preference. The position of the arm is not required to remain vertical. The forearm can be positioned at almost any orientation and angle to the table and then locked in place. As long as there is traction on the arm, the wrist will be in a rigid position. Surgeon's preference or required orientation will guide the choice of these alternative positions. The spider can also be used to scope a wrist in a vertical position and change the arm position to horizontal for an open procedure. This can be accomplished by positioning the spider on the operative side of the table by the patient's hip. The rest of the setup is identical to the setup on the non-operative side of the table. The patient's arm can be lowered to a horizontal position either over a hand table or on its own. It is important to release the rotational cam on the traction accessory prior to lowering the patient's arm. Pronation and supination adjustments are easily made and locked in place and traction is adjusted in the usual manner by rotating the traction collar.